Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really well. Unfortunately, while it is a very sunny day out here at the moment, it wasn't this morning. You'd normally be copying a uh, flea market video from me, but uh, unfortunately the conditions at 5.30 this morning were miserable. Uh, so much so that we had to uh, pull the pin on the flea market and they just didn't run it. So we couldn't go out and find the great items that we usually would. And I thought to myself, well, what do we do? Because I wanted to put out a video today and I thought, let's just put it up to you guys to ask some really good questions and I'll give you some great answers. So that's what we've got today. We've got a bunch of awesome questions. Thank you for everybody uh, that shot through uh, pretty much anything and everything, which is what I was after uh, over the course of the last couple of hours. And um, yeah, we'll figure, I'll figure I'll just go through and answer them and um, hopefully it makes for an entertaining video on this uh, otherwise miserable, wet old Sunday. Um, so let's kick it off. Um, the first one that I've got here is, what is the connection between you the Everyday Flipper and the Gold Coast Flipper, which I think refers to uh, the Gold Coast Picker, Danny. Um, look, we all met at the Carrara Markets, basically. I mean, Jamie, uh, for those of you who don't know Jamie, um, he's a 14-year-old kid um, who is gonna do incredible things. Um, and I just believe in the kids so much and uh, just love the way he goes about it for such a young age. But uh, he's watched my YouTube videos uh, for, for the last few months and um, he, he knew the flea market that I went to and he popped in one day and, and introduced himself and I very quickly realised that this kid for a 14 year old was incredibly switched on. And uh, yeah, took note of that and then from then on every single Sunday we just seemed to link up and, and find awesome stuff together. Uh, he actually teaches me more than I teach him to be honest with you which I think is just crazy given his age. But. Uh, yeah, no, he's a ripping kid and, and really it did, it did come through the YouTube channel and then Danny Gold Coast Picker, he moved from Adelaide. Um, he's got another YouTube channel as well. Both of the boys are about to tick over monetization, which is pretty exciting for them both. Um, and Danny's always out there trying to find great items. He's a, he's a serial purchaser, loves the hunt, uh, and he documents that part of his business um, through his YouTube channel. So I think he's a good one to follow as much as Jamie is as well. So yeah, awesome guys, met through the flea market, but ultimately met through YouTube. Uh, how will you be planning to travel around America while hitting up thrift stores? It's going to be tricky for sure. Yeah, and I probably haven't done enough thought into it just yet. Um, I'm going to be going to a few different states and uh, that's going to be a lot of internal connecting flights as well. So I'm really conscious of not having too much in the way of luggage. I'm actually thinking of going over there with an empty suitcase. I don't know what your thoughts are on that. I think that could be a fun way to go over there uh, knowing that I'm going to buy a lot of stuff. But uh, I think majority of what I'm going to be focusing on purchasing is clothing. Uh, I think clothing can be bought in volume and still be at a relatively better off weight uh, discrepancy uh, because that's where the, the, the costs are going to be incurred getting it back to Australia. Um, so I'm going to be very conscious around weight and I'm also going to cherry pick really the best of the bunch in any of the places that I'm visiting. Um, there's going to be a lot of collaborations that I do with other YouTube resellers and um, you know, as much as it's going to be exciting to learn from them and see what they're picking, I, I do want to kind of cherry pick a few things for myself and send it back. And hopefully you guys that are watching the videos might want to purchase it as well. It'd be really cool to find the items and actually sell it directly to the audience watching that video. So um, that's going to be my plan. But I think I'm going to have to keep it pretty limited um, to answer your question about how I'm going to do it because I'm going to have to bring it along with me. And then ultimately, I would also like to ship it back in just one bundle. Um, which uh, it means that we're going to have to carry it with me throughout the trip and then send it back as I leave. Uh, but I'll document all of that and I'll let you know how it goes and how much it, it actually costs to do. Uh, do you compare yourself to other resellers? Absolutely not. Uh, and not at one moment have I ever tried to compare myself on a YouTube level uh, or on a reselling level, especially with reselling. Like your eBay 90 day totals are that inaccurate. Um, I do my very best to kind of really break down my financials because I think you kind of have to. Um, if you're gonna be putting your numbers up, they need to be accurate, they need to be, you need to give every single number you've got or else you're wasting your time in my opinion. And look, not everyone wants to do that. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm one of the, the few channels out there that are quite happy to document all the numbers. I have been from the start and um, I guess my personality is just to be open and honest and, and share things and maybe to my detriment, maybe I don't need to put my financials up, but I figure if it helps anyone out there kind of get a bit of a gauge and idea about the work versus the time versus the actual income, um, that, that could be a good thing to document. So yeah, I, I, I don't compare myself and, and I never will. I don't think anyone should. Uh, do you expand, uh, do you think you will expand to have a storage facility? Um, to answer that question, I've, uh, no, in short, um, I've, got, I've got the real plans to grow this YouTube channel um, and I don't really have the plans to grow any, any extensive eBay business past pretty much where I'm currently at. I, I'm actually blown away that I've got a, a now a six-figure eBay business. So I think that's very cool. 
Um, I think the workload from a, a personal individual perspective is, is certainly at capacity right now. Um, and I'd probably like to hire somebody to do the job that I'm doing currently on an eBay front um, by, by growing my YouTube channel and earning money on that platform to be able to subsidize the wage of, of the person that could run eBay for me. That's ultimately my plan, but I don't want to burden that person with these big expectations and these big goals and move into a storage unit. I'd like to just keep it to a, a two-man band, me and someone else, and, and get them to do eBay, and then I'll do YouTube and document the way the business is running. Um, so that's that's truly my plan. That's, that's where my blinkers are. Um, Plus the storage facilities are so damn expensive. Like I will actually be this week, funnily enough, I'm gonna be looking into it more to realize that it's not the way to go about it. Um, I wanna get some accurate pricing and bring that pricing to you in a video. Let me know if you'd like to see that in the comments, but um, I just think it's gonna be far too expensive and, and unfeasible um, to go down the storage facility path. Uh, reselling Wonders, how's your day off work-life balance going? I've spoken about this a lot on this channel. And it's going okay. I obviously had a flea market and a garage sale last week that was pretty much my entire weekend wiped out and I've always got Monday to Friday tasks. So I have worked the last 14 days straight. So that's probably not a good start for my, uh, my work-life balance. But prior to that, I was getting a Friday finish at midday and then I was having Saturdays off. And I think that's the best time to be taking your break as well. Sundays are a big day with this flea market doing these videos. Um, but yeah, work-life balance has been good prior to last weekend. And I think that's really all I need is just half a day on a Friday, go to the pub, watch the footy, have a few beers. Um, and then Saturday, I've got the entire day off where I don't come back to mum and dad's place here. I stay at my place, uh, which is about 15 minutes from here. And I try also to leave my laptop here as well in the office. And um, that really allows me not to do anything at all when it comes to eBay or YouTube. So yeah, it's going well, it's healthy. I recognize that with a few videos and a few talking points to myself that you really do need to take a break. You can't be working every single day and uh, I'm feeling a whole lot better for it. Are you sad that the flea market was canceled? Yeah, I was. The flea market for me is the, my favorite sourcing ground. Um, I, I do go out to the thrift stores more often than not, um, just because of the access that you get every single day of the week. But uh, the flea market on a Sunday morning at 5 a.m., there is no better grounds to, uh, to find great items. Um, so yeah, I, I, was, I was very sad. Um, is the best way to get more sales simply just to list more. Yeah, it's my mantra, list more. If I could give you one piece of advice, it would be to list more. You will get more sales if you list more. You will learn what to sell if you list more. It's all through trial and error. It is experience of just having a crack, going out and finding items, giving it a go, and then monitoring it, paying attention to what is selling, what isn't selling, tweak your price points, see what the profits end up being, and it's just a learning curve. You're gonna do it over a very long period of time before you're successful. Um, and the only way that you're gonna get better quicker is to list more. Um, there's obviously, I, I should really say with that question, there's so many other alternatives to, to boost sales and I've made videos on benefits and, and consistent practices to allow small sales to come through. But the, at, the, at the true crux of it, you can be doing all the best practices, but if you're not putting up regular items and, and listing regular items on a daily basis, you're not gonna get sales. So uh, yes, to that question. Uh, what's your favorite item to flip? Shoes, very simply. Uh, shoes, but if I had to even break that further, football boots, I love selling my football boots because I just know them like the back of my hand, uh, which allows me to really capitalize when I'm in the thrift on, on shoes, even at a higher purchase price because I know that I'll get over $100 for them. Um, so that just comes down to a very fine niche uh, understanding. But um, even to go even further than that, if you want to talk about an individual shoe that I like to find regularly, which I do find regularly, uh, it's the Nike Metcons. They are the, uh, the CrossFit shoes, the training, the weightlifting shoes. Uh, I, I document them a lot on this channel, but I can get upwards of $100 for them every single time. And they're a really durable shoe. They, they last forever. Um, so I love finding those. And I've, I have paid up for them in the past and been able to turn them around really quickly. So yeah, shoes, Nike Metcons, and footy boots would be my answer. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. Do you have kids? And uh, and if so, how do you juggle all of that with your trips to the thrift and your markets before you went full time? I don't have kids. Uh, and I'm, I'm as far away from having kids as you could possibly get. I've uh, probably got to put a bit of time into my uh, my personal life or my romantic life, I suppose, because uh, at work has just really taken up any of that. Um, I broke up with my girlfriend at the time um, just before I got into, into eBay and reselling. I was, I was over in Perth. Um, and that broke down from a location issue, just me wanting to be here, her wanting to be there. And, uh, and I moved back to the Gold Coast and started this and really I've just been stuck in, in a working world 
in a growth world of trying to build this business and it's not allowed me to focus on too much else. So um, yeah, no kids at this point, but um, for those that do have kids out there and, and do juggle a full-time job plus a reselling side hustle, well done. Uh, Cause I can imagine that would be a, a whole heap of work. Uh, how do you start? How did you start your reselling journey? Uh, well, this is a this is a, I mean, how far back? I guess I've always worked in the football industry in the AFL. I've worked for Carlton uh, before the coronavirus. I worked in Perth for Fremantle uh, for three years, and I worked for the Gold Coast Suns when they first came into the AFL. Uh, I worked there for four years, so uh, pretty much my entire working career out of the uh, out of university, uh, which is where I did a business degree, was was in the footy industry, and I love football. So for me, it's always been to try and do something that you're passionate about. And uh, yeah, I got stuck in that and I absolutely loved every single minute of it. Worked a lot of days because you'd have to work game days. So you're often working six days a week. So that's why the transition to doing six, seven days a week here, it's, it's almost felt the same. Um, but I very quickly realized when I first started out that I, was, I had a knack and I had an interest and a passion for sales, which not everyone does, but I just had a true genuine interest and I was actually, I, I quickly realized that I was quite good at it compared to other people. And uh, I think it was due to the fact that I was passionate about it, but um, I stuck with sales and I did sales for 10 years basically in the football industry and, and had some good success with it. So when I fell out, of, due to COVID, I basically I fell out of the footy industry and I said no to going back to Melbourne, no to going back to the Carlton Football Club. And I just thought that e-commerce would be something that's, um, I guess, used and, and, and builds and grows over the next few years. That was my thoughts with the virus. Um, so I thought that eBay had been there for 20, 25 years, um, you know, pretty, pretty reputable company. Um, and people are gonna probably be on that side a whole lot more than they have been in the past. So didn't know if it was possible to build a business on the platform at that point, but um, slowly over the time, I realized that it was. And, uh, and then I really just tripled down on that. Um, but I, I tell you right now, I would not be a full-time reseller if it wasn't for the YouTube channel. Uh, there was no opportunities to monetize and grow and build an audience on YouTube and document my journey. To me, it's, it, it's, it, it wouldn't be feasible to put in the time to, to be a full-time reseller. I think I would go back to a career-related role in the AFL. Um, there's just huge monetization opportunities with YouTube, and I, I do recognize that. Um, and it really kind of um, balances out the earnings that you get from eBay as well. So you're not reliant on product selling. Um, you know, you've got the fallout from, from putting a, a video up and, and AdSense and affiliate marketing and yeah, merchandise when that comes around over the next few months. So there's just so many different avenues to earn money on YouTube that I don't think too many people realize, but I did right from the very beginning. So when I put the two pieces of the pie together, I knew that I could be on YouTube, growing a channel and selling on eBay. I felt that was feasible enough for me to not go back to a career. And hopefully I can earn more than what I was in my nine to five, which I'm certainly not yet, but I think over a few more years, I might be able to surpass it, which would be, which would be pretty exciting. Uh, what do you like most about flipping? Oh mate, to be honest with you, just the thrill, the thrill of turning a $2 item, you guys know it yourselves, two into 50 is an unbelievable feeling. And, um, and also just finding items of value that you know through digging and sifting over the courses of years and months, that you, your awareness and your knowledge builds up and then you go out and you see it. And then you see that price tag and it's two bucks and you're like, oh my goodness, that is just money in my pocket. That, that's a real thrill for me. Um, and, and it is still selling, it's actively selling as well, which is obviously, I'm a, I'm a numbers guy, I love crunching my numbers, I like my spreadsheet. Um, so yeah, that's probably the biggest thrill, I think, of, of flipping is the actual find of the item. Um, then you have gotta put in the work, obviously, to make sure you go and sell it. Do you worry about the future of eBay and flipping in general from Zoe? Um, no, I, to be honest, I've never stressed on, on that. Um, I think if eBay was to fall away over the next couple of months, couple of years, then I would just grab the next platform that was doing better. Um, so if it's Amazon, I would probably try and learn Amazon like the back of my hand, like I did with eBay. I just think e-commerce and, and internet purchasing is gonna be something that, that humanity will be doing globally um, for a very, very long time to come. I don't see it changing and I'm not romantic or, or married to eBay. Um, it's just the platform that's sustainable right now, but it might not be in the next 12 months. And I'm happy to adapt and, and change to suit whatever is sustainable at the time. So no, I'm absolutely not worried at all. And, and yeah, I, I, I don't think I will be for quite some time. Uh, when you go to America, will you set your eBay store to holiday mode? I would love to get your thoughts on that, to be honest with you. Um, I, I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do just yet. Um, I think 
I think, well, I can guarantee you right now, I'll be scheduling 10 items to be listed up every single day for the 10 days that I'm away. I'm gonna source a bulk allocation of 100 items and then just sit there and just list them up, schedule them up to go live for 10 a day. So it almost doesn't feel like I've, I've gone anywhere. Um, but it's, it's more the shipping. I don't, want to, I don't want to train anyone or ask my mum and dad. I don't want to burden them with any sort of work-related task while I'm away. But I also don't want to go on holiday mode either. Because I, I really do think that that falls and plummets your impressions, your page views, and ultimately your sales. And I don't want to sacrifice that for two weeks and then find it a really long time until it builds back up to where, I, where it was before I left. So what I'm thinking of doing is having those listings go up and then putting a notice in there for any single purchase I might get over that 10 day period, it will be posted upon my return. So whatever that date is that I, I say that I'll be able to ship it off, I'll give myself 12 days because I'll need probably two days for the sales that come in um, to make sure I get shipped off on time, but I'll give a date. Let me know in the comments if you think that's a smart move for my, I guess, holiday mode, because um, I'm not sure on what the best practice will be at this stage. But again, uh, I'll be documenting all of that for you in case you want to do a trip yourself. Uh, will you go to the city Harry Tornado lives in on your US trip? Um, yes, yes, I will be doing that, um, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, David Furley says, what is your average time spent in each thrift store and how much do you spend sourcing each week? Uh, well, to answer that question, three days is sourcing. Um, it's a flea market Sunday, as you know, it's a trip to the thrift on a Thursday and then probably a Tuesday in there as well. So three big sourcing days, that generally gets me a week's worth of items. I don't have a death pile. So pretty much every single week, whatever I'm finding, I'm listing for that week. Um, and I, I do like not having a death pile. I like the comfort of having a death pile, but I don't like the habit of not listing up items that you're buying. I think that the easiest way to list your item is to list it the minute you buy it. That's a big tip that I've got for anyone out there to, that, that might have a bad death pile. The minute you kind of have bought it and then you don't go ahead and list it, you kind of get sick of the item and you get bored of the item so much so that you don't want to even do anything with the item. And if you haven't listed it up, it generally doesn't get listed. So uh, that's a big one for that. But time spent in each one, I sell shoes, I sell clothing and I sell media. So I really only go into the thrift stores and, and more so just look in those three areas. That's pretty much where I'm spending most of my time and I'd say probably about 20 to 30 minutes in every store that I go into. How do you deal with negative feedback on eBay? Um, pretty comfortably, to be honest with you. I'm not perfect. My eBay percentage for feedback is 99.3, um, but I was very fortunate to get a really bad negative feedback right from the very beginning. So at no point in my eBay journey have I been anything but under 100%, and I think it's the best thing that ever happened to me because I don't stress about it. 98% and above is where your eBay store won't be impacted based on feedback. So as long as I'm over 98%, I don't have a care in the world. And I don't think it's really ever impacted my sales. Not that I would know, you'd never know because you've never been on 100% to know otherwise, but I just don't think that it would be a massive concern um, because my sales have allowed me to get to six figures and I've been at 99% for the entire time. Um, so I just don't stress it. What is your favorite quote? I like this one because I love my quotes. Um, but to get my favorite quote out to you, I would probably say from uh, Will Smith and the movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. Um, I'll put it up on screen, but I think it's, um, if you've got a dream, you've got to protect it. If people can't do something, they want to tell you that you can't do it, uh, you know, go after a period. And whatever, whatever the exact words are, I truly have always remembered that quote first of all great movie pursue your happiness with will smith and his son if you haven't watched that incredible um but that quote and that scene really stuck out to me because you do kind of need to protect the, those dreams that you have and i certainly did that with this ebay and youtube channel i didn't want to tell friends and family because i know that their their mindset towards it would have been that it was unsustainable and maybe unachievable um, maybe too hard to do um, no kind of awareness or understanding as to how go, how, how to go about doing it and i knew in my head I, knew, I, I could see myself with 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I'm not there yet, nowhere near. But in my mind, I've, I've got 100,000, as I talk to you right now, I've got 100,000 subscribers. You're out there, you just haven't clicked the button yet. And I've got an eBay store that's six figures. That was always the thing in my head. 100,000 subscribers, $100,000 in income on eBay. And I've got the 100,000 on eBay. And I've got that, I've got that basically within 12 to 18 months of, of starting this journey. So I proved to myself that the dreams that I had initially when I was on zero and zero, 
have almost, almost been able to achieve, certainly from an eBay front, but I, I truly believe that over time it will be from a YouTube front as well. Um, and I feel I could have been persuaded if I went and started to tell the world too early on about what these, what these goals were that I had for myself. Um, so I kept it very quiet, I kept it very insular, I, I protected the dream that I had for myself. And I think that allowed me to kind of pursue and persist um, by only telling, I guess, my mum and dad, who allowed me to obviously set up here at home and, and pursue it. But I didn't tell my immediate friends um, because I just, I, I just feared negative influence. Not that they would ultimately give it to me, but I just didn't want to hear any form of pushback to not go after it because I felt like any form of pushback might have convinced me not to do it. And I didn't want to be convinced not to. I wanted to have a crack. And I think anyone out there that's got any form of goal or half a thought to pursue something should just 100% go all in and, and completely believe in yourself because it's amazing what can happen when you just go all in. You've got to go all in, you've got to obsess, and you've just got to go after it. And that's exactly what I've done for the last two years, and it is paying off. And I will get 100,000 subscribers, I just know it. Um, so yeah, that's all stemmed from my favorite quote. Will Smith, The Pursuit of Happiness, make sure you watch it. Um, speaking of The Pursuit of Happiness, guys, that was a big episode of uh, the Q&A, and uh, I, felt pretty, uh, I felt pretty happy doing it. Nice to do something a little bit different, very low key. Uh, speaking on the camera, one still shot. There's no fancy uh, bells and whistles to this edit and um, hopefully you've still stuck around and you're here now watching because uh, it's you guys, it's the subscribers of the channel, my 30% clubbers that stick through to the end of these videos uh, that really mean the most to me because you, you, all of your comments, all of the messages, all of the Instagram moments and likes and comments and everything else motivates me to keep making these videos and every single day we get more people join the channel more people view the channel. Uh, people people help me out and they buy off my eBay store and all of that support is literally keeping me doing what I'm doing and having fun doing it. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry we couldn't get out to the flea market today, um, but I look forward to catching you on Tuesday. when We're gonna go through these sold items that have come through yesterday and today and we're up to about 20 odd items. So it's been a pretty good weekend. And I'll bring you all of those sales and what they sold for on Tuesday. So hopefully you can join me for that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Like the video and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks guys.